everybody. Welcome to Blue HQ. And today I have a real treat for you. And it all started when I was at the Dive Talk meetup in Cozumel recently. I was talking to Gus and Woody from Dive Talk about all the interesting questions that we get about cave diving from people. And there's one that we hear a lot. And the question is, if you're afraid of losing the line, why don't you clip yourself to the line? And it's easy to see why that seems like it would be a good idea, but it's not very practical. And we thought it would be hilarious if we actually went underwater and did that. But Gus actually did it. And so he wanted to present that today as a Blue World Plus episode. So Gus is going to be hosting his very first Blue World Plus. So. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Gus Gonzalez, our new cave diving correspondent. Hi, I'm Gus from Dive Talk and I'm guest hosting an episode of Blue World TV. You know, one of the questions that we get the most as cave divers is, if losing the guideline means that you can potentially get lost and drown or die inside a cave, why don't you just tether yourself to the guideline? So that's what we're gonna answer today. So today I'm gonna take a piece of line, I'm gonna strap it on my body, I'm gonna strap it to the line, and I'm gonna attempt to dive inside this cave while carrying a line. Yeah, let's, let's, let me answer why. So here I am tethering myself to the line, as I mentioned before. Notice that this cave that I'm diving in is a spring. I'm swimming against the current, and as soon as I let go of the carabiner, look at this. It just goes back. The flow is pushing it back. So I'm kind of swimming against the current with the tether swimming kind of behind me. And I guess the length of the rope, the length of the line will dictate how far back. But look how far back this thing is. Now here, here I am just swimming along the way. And here's when I start having problems. As you can see, the carabiner gets stuck. And this is common. The line inside the cave, the guideline that we follow is not suspended in the air magically it's tied up continuously throughout the cave into rocks into cinder blocks into sticks you know there's sometimes you see pvc pipes if there's nothing to tie it into they will stick a pvc pipe in the clay and tie the line to that so there is constant obstacles in this thing so here i am swimming i don't know this is probably 10 feet three meters or so and bang i run into yet another obstacle so i have to come back and undo the carabiner i'm not very happy as you can hear so here i am i'm undoing the safety unhooking it i'm about to hook it but uh there's double arrows in the line so i have to jump over those click again and keep going and obviously this varies in a cave per cave basis Sometimes there's a tie off every like 10 feet it seems like sometimes he run, runs pretty far So here's another example of something that, that is common in cave diving I am about to do a jump and this double arrows in the guideline indicate that there's a jump or a, Another line basically that is adjacent to the main line. So I'm about to do a jump meaning I'm connecting the mm. secondary line that goes into another mm -hmm. tunnel to the main line of the cave but again, I'm tethered, so I have to deal with that. So I have the line on my la left hand with the spool on my left hand, and the line is kind of in the way, so I'm trying to wrap it. All this time, I'm trying to keep buoyancy and trim and swimming against current. So there's current here. I'm swimming and swimming and swimming just the same place. You can see the bubbles flying backwards. All right, so I'm undoing the carabiner and then deciding, okay, where am I tethering to? I guess the jump line? Which is silly because I'm holding it in my hand, but I mean the tether has to go somewhere So let me lock it for safety, obviously I don't want it to be unlocked. So all right, here it is. I'm a little frustrated Of course, I need to drop a cookie on the exit side Following cave diving protocol and here I go with my jump and with the tether on the jump which sounds redundant to me But anyway, I'm doing it so here I go, I go under a rock to keep it streamlined. If people are swimming by, they don't run into it. And obviously my tether gets tangled on that, which I just set it up. And by the way, I'm doing this 100% for real. Like I'm taking it seriously. I'm doing my jump. I didn't even know that it got tangled. I'm just following procedures really, like going under the rock like I would normally do it. I haven't even noticed that that thing is caught back there. <laughs> I mean, look at that mess. It's like double line, one line under the rock, the other line being pulled by the jump. 
So you'll see what happens here as I finish this jump with the double ender pointing to the exit, just as this protocol. So double wrapping it into the arrow. Then I double wrap my line into the double ender. Again, this is not a class for jumping or for line work. So I'm not going to go into extreme detail on this, but that's completed. And now I notice that, oh, I'm stuck. Ugh, very frustrating. Anyway, I unhook and I break protocol here. Our new made up protocol of tethering because I'm like, okay, I didn't, I didn't break protocol. I tether myself into my jump. Then I get to the spool. Then I unhook and rehook. Well, 10 minutes just to make a jump. Okay, so here's an interesting one that we didn't think about. What if teams were diving by? Like there's a team exiting and a team going in and this is just a one person team, but imagine it's three and three or four and four. I mean, what a disaster. So Benjamin here is being pulled by the current. He can't stop. So he's dragging me with him. What is, what? He's just, we got stopped by those double arrows, but he's just pulling me. So I need to undo mine. He needs to undo his because he's stuck in the arrows. And yeah, I'm beyond frustrated. I'm like, this cannot, I would never cave dive if that was okay. Okay, so now my line is stuck in the arrow, tangled. Yeah, forget it, I quit. And there you have it. That's why we don't tether ourselves to the line because, well, you saw all the problems in the video. However, I just wanted to mention, if you enjoyed me hosting this episode of Blue World, let Jonathan Berg and the team know below. That way I can come back and answer some more questions about cave diving. Plus, if you have more questions about reels and spools and all of that, Todd made a great episode for Blue World TV and I'm gonna leave it right here. Go ahead and check out Todd's explanation about reels and spools and all that stuff. And we'll see you on the next one. And don't forget to check out Gus and Woody's channel, Dive Talk. Are you still here? Click it.